65 million years ago, all kinds of creatures roamed the earth. The snappers are quite vicious on their own, but they quickly run away when a T-Rex shows up to attack them. As the snappers rush to the sea, the T-Rex manages to catch one in its mouth, but suddenly a huge shark known as Megalodon emerges behind the T-Rex and devours it. In present day, Jonas is starting a new mission. He uses some tools to make a small explosive and opens a hole in a wall, only to reveal he's inside a container on a large ship in the middle of the Philippine Sea. He sneaks around to investigate and discovers the workers throwing hazardous chemical cans into the water, so he takes a few pictures for evidence. Then he moves to the office to take pictures of the written records, but there's a parrot that begins yelling for help. A few men show up to check on the noise and Jonas immediately punches one and pushes the others down the stairs before he starts running away, hitting anyone that tries to stop him. Eventually Jonas finds himself surrounded, but he doesn't hesitate to fight them all at the same time, blocking them with barrels before rushing upstairs. Another guy tries to catch him and Jonas kicks him off, but then he keeps running and at the edge, more men soon surround him again, so Jonas just jumps into the ocean. At that moment his co-workers Mac and Rigas show up in a plane to save him by carefully gliding on the water so that Jonas can climb through the hatch. Meanwhile in the Oceanic Institute Hainan in China, Jiuming and Hillary are trying out their latest invention, a special suit that gives them superhuman strength and resistance. Jiuming manages to destroy two huge blocks, conforming the suit is ready for their expedition to the deep oceanic trench. At that moment Jiuming's niece Meiying shows up and reminds them they must get ready for tonight's party. Later in the evening, the institute throws a huge party. Jiuming gets on the stage to reveal the institute's pet in a pool behind him, it's a female megalodon named Haiki, who they caught when she was still a pup. The institute learned a lot from her and they built technology that will take the team to the deepest corners of the oceans to the place Haiki comes from. The next day, Meiying asks Jonas to take her on the expedition, but he tells her it's too dangerous for someone so young. The conversation is interrupted by Raigas, who informs them that Jiuming has entered Haiki's pool. The trio rushes to the window in the control room and tries to tell her Jiuming this is a bad idea, but Jiuming swears he has this experiment under control. Then he takes out an aquatic pulse that gets Haiki's attention and she slowly begins approaching Jiuming, dodging him at the last second to swim around. Then Haiki begins swimming faster and goes after Jiuming, who suddenly disappears from the water. Everyone thinks. He got eaten, but Jiuming appears in the room, revealing he was pulled out at the last second and expressing excitement over the experience. Both Jiuming and Jonas scold him for his recklessness, and Jonas and Jiuming agree that Haiki has behaved strangely all week. Sometime later, the group flies to the marine research center known as Mana 1, which they now use as a base. During the night, Haiki is seen swimming around the area, looking for a way to get out. She picks up speed and hits her head against the bars until she opens the way and manages to escape. The next day, the team gets the equipment ready and decides to split into two submarines, Jonas, Rigas, and Sal will take one, while Jiuming will go with Lance and Curtis in the second one. Mac, Jess and DJ will stay in the control room to keep an eye on the radars. While the submarines begin traveling through the very dark waters, they suddenly notice some movement on the security cameras, it's Meiying, who sneaked inside the submarine when nobody was watching. Before they can cancel the mission, the radar suddenly finds a megalodon swimming nearby. The submarines begin evasive maneuvers and at that moment the computer connects to Haiki's tracker, confirming this is her. However it seems she has rather hostile intentions, so the submarines have no choice but to enter the thermocline. As the submarines glide through the water as carefully as possible, the divers are shocked to suddenly see another megalodon that is much larger than Haiki. Juming announces they're changing direction to follow the megs for research, ignoring everyone's protests and reminders that this is uncharted territory. The submarines move deeper into the unknown, finding a beautiful area full of vegetation. At that moment they look up and find a third megalodon, they also see Haiki and the megs move closer. The divers realize that the creatures are reproducing, which explains Haiki's behavior last week, she's been in heat. At that moment, the scanners detect a wrecked underwater station with advanced technology, they also find a submarine above them. In that submarine is Montez, the leader of an illegal mining operation. His workers are in the process of setting up some explosives to get some heavy minerals, but when Montez detects the two submarines coming closer, he decides to save himself by going away as he blows up the explosives, killing his men in the process. Montez gets to escape, but the team's submarines are shaken by the explosion. They try to move fast but fail to get away, then a rock slide falls on top of them and damages both submarines until they lose their connection with the control room and each other. In the control room, Mac orders Jess to prepare the rescue ship. However she discovers the ship has been sabotaged, meaning there's a traitor in the crew. At that moment, Sal manages to fix the comms and Jonas gets to talk to Mac, who explains they can't send anyone to save them. Jonas decides they'll put on the special suits and walk to the base they saw earlier, but they'll have to be quick because the suits only have oxygen for two hours. Once everyone is suited up, they leave the submarine and begin walking through the trench. Suddenly Jonas notices a presence nearby, but it's just Jiuming and the others, who had the same idea. 
The area is beautiful and glows thanks to special plants, but when Lance tries to get a closer look, a squid jumps up and attacks him, attaching itself to his helmet. Luckily the others quickly scare the creature away. They continue to walk while watching lots of small aquatic creatures swim by. Suddenly they notice some movement in the darkness and when they turn around, Lance is gone, only his helmet is left. Finding the body would be impossible so they just keep moving. Meanwhile Mac tells DJ and Jess to check the security footage and the employees' profiles to look for clues about the mole. In his own submarine, Montez gets in contact with Hillary, who turns out to be the traitor that put a mole in the team. After hearing what happened, Hillary asks Montez to kill everyone. Back to the team, they begin using the infrared lights of their suits to save energy. Unfortunately Sal is too nervous and scared, which causes her to waste more oxygen. At that moment, an unknown life form appears on the radar and a shoal passes right next to them, startling them. Then the radar starts reacting again and suddenly a bunch of snappers shows up to attack them. While the team tries to fight them off, Curtis' helmet gets damaged, and Jiuming sees that Meiying is in danger. He lits up a flare, which causes the snappers to go away. Unfortunately two megalodons appear next. Jiuming tells everyone that he'll buy some time so they can escape, but Jonas refuses to see his friend die and takes the flare to throw it away. One of the megalodons goes after it and crashes against a bridge, causing lots of debris to start falling. Meiying almost gets crushed, but she's pulled out of the way just in time. Sal can't breathe well and is slowly Jiuming down, so she pushes him away before she gets devoured by the beast. Jiuming falls and Curtis rushes back to help him as they run from the incoming megalodon. Soon the team makes it to the base and struggles with the door against the beast until they finally close it. Unfortunately the damage to Curtis' helmet causes her suit to compress and she dies too. After taking a moment to grieve, the team takes off the suits and investigates the base. After confirming there's nobody there, they reach the control room. While Meiying tries to contact Mac, the team finds the minerals that are being mined here, which are used in aerospace and are worth a fortune. At that moment Meiying makes contact with Jess, who tells them that at the other end of the base there are two emergency pods they can use to escape. The team begins making their way there and on a corridor, Jiuming is shocked to find the miners used the suits he designed, meaning someone has been stealing intel from them. After crossing an electric door, the team finally finds the pods, but when they try to activate them, the door closes behind them. Suddenly a screen activates and Jess appears to confess that she's the mole, explaining that she's locked up the room and ejecting one of the pods to prove it. While Hillary watches the transmission from her officer, Jess tells Rigas that they'll be allowed to escape if she kills Jonas. Desperate to save everyone, Jonas tells Rigas to do it, but Rigas can't bring herself to do it, so Jess expels the other pod as well. Then Hillary is added to the transmission and after gloating about her plan, she announces she's already sent people to deal with the workers in Mana 1 and orders Jess to finish this. Jess opens a small hatch and now the pod room is slowly being filled with water. Their only option to survive is to open the door, and to do that they need to override Jess' control. Jonas volunteers to go through the airlock and return to the sea in order to gain access to the comm link, only to come across a megalodon. With a quick shot Jonas gets rid of it before working on the comm link again, but he falls unconscious under the pressure of the sea. When Jonas wakes up, he discovers he was saved by Montez, who wants to kill him with his own hands as revenge because many years ago Jonas sent him to prison. While the team is starting to drown, Montez and Jonas begin fighting, using any tool they can find around them. They end up falling on top of a machine, but Jonas hits Montez with some ore, then throws a tool into the machine to get it stuck. Montez tries to attack again only for Jonas to kick him into the water. Afterward Jonas uses a chain to return to the control room, where he starts working on the override. Unfortunately Montez returns and continues the fight, and after exchanging a few blows, Jonas knocks Montez out with a shovel. Then he finally presses the button to open the gates, and the water expels his friends on the stairs. Now the team can use Montez submarine to escape, but they discover that predator countermeasures are down. They'll need to distract the Megs in some way, so Jiuming says he'll light up the station. He rushes back to the control room and turns on all the lights, causing the megalodons to start attacking the station. As the whole building shakes, Rigas is worried that the sub will be buried under debris. Jonas is about to close the door, but Jiuming comes back just in time and the four survivors escape safely. On the way to the surface, the team realizes that the miners' bombs left a giant hole in the thermocline. They don't worry because it'll close up soon, but they don't notice several animals escaping from it. Meanwhile Montez also escapes by putting on a special suit and holding onto a buoy. At the base, Mac and DJ check the security cameras and finally learn Jess is the mole. At that moment a bunch of mercenaries arrive at the base and Jess tells them to kill anyone that opposes them. Mac and DJ hear the noise outside the door so they come out with a plan, Mac shoots pepper spray at the men's eyes and DJ tases Jess, giving the duo the chance to run away. At that moment the team makes it to the surface and notices there's trouble, so they carefully sneak into the base to help their friends. Meanwhile Mac and DJ come across more mercenaries in a corridor, so they beat them up before jumping into the water. They quickly swim back into the base and DJ shoots a few failed bullets, but as soon as they cross a door, they're surrounded and handcuffed. 
The mercenaries take their prisoners down another hallway but suddenly Jiuming blocks their way, speaking in Chinese as a distraction. The trick works and Jonas gets to catch them by surprise, quickly knocking them out. In the meantime, Montez enters the base too and reunites with Jess, revealing they're a couple. At that moment, the three megalodons appear nearby, and Jess calls Hillary to discuss how to proceed. They think they are safe from the beasts in the control room, however the megalodon suddenly breaks the glass and eats Jess. Montez manages to run away before the water can reach him and locks the door behind him to block it. Back to the team, they find an escape boat and begin to row away. The mercenaries get on another boat to chase after them, but seeing the megs around, they slow down and prepare their weapons under Montez's orders. However before they can shoot, the meg jumps out and devours them, allowing the team to escape. Montez calls Hillary and she promises to pay him a fortune if Montez manages to kill Jonas. Moments later, Jonas uses a few tools to build a harpoon before the boat arrives at Fun Island, which is filled with tourists partying. The dolphins are swimming away very fast, which proves they know what's coming. On a ship sailing nearby, a man proposes to his girlfriend and accidentally drops the ring. After picking it up, he looks up to find his girlfriend gone. Suddenly the ship begins shaking and everyone falls into the water, where some mysterious tentacles are capturing people. Hillary, Montez, and their men make it to the island by helicopter, but when they enter the woods, they're attacked by the snappers and open fire without much success. Hillary is waiting in the helicopter and gets nervous, so she calls for Montez. This reveals his location to the snappers, who climb into the helicopter to catch her and take her away. Meanwhile at the beach, the team warns people about the incoming sharks and everyone begins running away in panic. At that moment the megalodons make it to the shore and begin eating any person still in the water. After telling Mei-Ying to hide, Jonas, Mac, and Jiuming make plans to find jet skis and more harpoons. DJ and Raigas enter a shack to use a phone, but the line isn't working. At that moment they notice the snappers feeding on the mercenaries, so they must hide and use a mirror to keep an eye on them. Back to Jonas, he realizes that there's only one jet ski, so he asks his friends for their harpoons and leaves to fight the megs alone, unaware that Montez is watching from a distance. Jiuming and Mac run inside a warehouse and find nitrate to make a bomb, but unfortunately the remaining mercenaries also enter the building while escaping the snappers and capture the duo. Jonas rides his jet ski as far away from the beach as possible, getting the megs to follow him. When he makes a jump to avoid an attack, he falls into the water and quickly swims back to the jet ski, which now won't start. A megalodon comes closer and is about to eat him, but Jonas manages to make the jet ski work and takes off again. Meanwhile Rigas and DJ wait for the snappers to leave and approach a body to get a cell phone, only for the snappers to come back for them. The duo immediately starts running and enters the warehouse, where they become prisoners as well. Juming distracts the mercenaries with chatter and suddenly pushes DJ against a button, which opens the front door and lets the snappers in. While the mercenaries fight against the beasts, the team runs away with a bag of nitrate, jumping out of the way right before a stray bullet hits the gas tank. Then DJ and Rigas use the stolen phone to call for help while Mac and Jiuming go looking for Hillary's helicopter. When they find the chopper, they discover a snapper waiting, so Jiuming distracts it while Mac runs to the helicopter. The snapper attacks Jiuming and after some struggle, he manages to hit it with a shovel, but now more snappers are coming because they heard the noise. Jiuming runs to the gas pump and connects it to the helicopter before jumping on it and Mac begins flying it rather badly. However Jiuming falls and has to fight the snappers with the gas pump. At that moment Mac gains control of the helicopter and shoots a flare at the creatures, which starts a fire thanks to the oil at the same time Jiuming jumps to join his friend. In the sea, Jonas rides some high waves and meets face to face with a meg. The first harpoon he throws doesn't do much, but the second manages to kill the beast. When he is about to throw the last one, it suddenly slips from his hand because of a bullet, it's Montez, who is firing at him from a boat. Now Jonas has to drive extra fast to dodge him and the Meg at the same time. At the beach, the mysterious tentacles reveal a huge kraken that begins snatching people, and Mei-Ying decides she must help. She enters the water to rescue people and this is seen by Jiuming, who is building a bomb in the helicopter. He puts the tools aside and hangs off the edge to try to reach Mei-Ying, but at that moment the tentacles capture the helicopter. Jiuming jumps away with the bomb and watches the helicopter crash into the ocean. Next the megalodon hits Jonas' jet ski and he jumps on the bridge before it explodes. The meg destroys the bridge trying to chase him and accidentally gets tangled in chains, giving Jonas the chance to hide under the bridge. While Jiuming saves Mei-Ying from a tentacle by stabbing it, Montez makes it to the bridge and begins shooting blindly. Jonas grabs a piece of wood and stabs Montez's leg, which begins bleeding and gets the megalodon's attention. When the beast comes closer, Jonas kicks Montez off the bridge and he gets eaten by the meg. The Kraken continues its destruction and captures Jiuming, who uses the closeness to stick the bomb to the beast's body. Unfortunately the explosion doesn't do enough damage and Jiuming gets captured by a tentacle. Haiki also gets captured, but when she sees Jiuming in danger, she bites the tentacle and frees herself to then eat the Kraken in seconds. Now free, Jiuming swims toward the helicopter wreck to rescue Mac, and the other male Meg begins getting closer. 
Jonas jumps in and uses one of the helicopter's rotors to create vibrations in the water, which gets the Meg's attention. As soon as the beast comes closer, Jonas stabs it with the rotor, finally killing it. Meanwhile the survivors return to the shore and Mei-Ying saves a dog. At that moment a snapper shows up, but DJ jumps in just in time to shoot it. Jonas, Mac, and Jiuming try to swim back as well, but they notice Heike is coming after them. Jiuming goes underwater and uses his device to send some signals that cause Heike to turn away and join the dolphins instead. The three men return to the beach and reunite with Mei-Ying while the Coast Guard finally arrives to help. While they have a drink to celebrate, they wonder if Heike is pregnant now. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more awesome content. So feel free to leave a comment below and let me know what you think. I'll see you in the next one, bye.